What's up everybody, it's Jason Cruz here with another episode of The Legal Submission. This time I was going to talk a little bit about some news that came down the pike regarding the UFC antitrust law lawsuit. And it relates to an appeal that actually happened before the Ninth Circuit. Not necessarily the Zufa case, but Zufa uh, has eyes on this particular appeal that is gone before the Ninth Circuit and now has some strange facts to it. So let's talk about the case. The case it relates to an a antitrust lawsuit concerning tuna, tuna producers and tuna companies. So we, we'll call this the, uh, the uh, Starkist litigations, and Starkist is a tuna company and it's a part of the lawsuit. But the, tech, the, the official name of the case is Olean Wholesale Grocery Cooperative, Inc. versus Bumblebee Foods, LLC. The case uh, w uh, relates to a class action by uh, several producers of tuna uh, alleging violations of antitrust law of tuna companies related to uh, potential price fiction of uh, tuna prices. Uh, there's a lot of issues to the case, but uh, the ones that pertain to what Zufa and, you, and the plaintiffs in the uh, Zufa lawsuit are looking to is the awarding of, um, excuse me, the granting of class certification by the trial court for the plaintiffs to, uh, to be a class of individuals that would be able to bring a lawsuit against uh, Starkist, Bumblebee, Bumblebee Foods, LLC, and others. The issue that went up to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal was whether or not the plaintiffs could satisfy uh, the predominance requirement of the class action rule. And so that relates to whether all of the class of people, all of the people that agree to be represented by the uh, plaintiff's attorneys are injured or are, are going or are injured, um, have some sort of similar grievance to uh, the, uh, the alleged uh, antitrust um, violation. And so uh, in the Tuna case, defendants in, uh, contended that the plaintiffs could not satisfy the predominance requirement because one of their own models shown, showed that there was a sizable percentage of purchasers that did not uh, get affected by the alleged price fixing. So when we talk about models, again, here we are, we're talking about economic uh, models brought forth by the plaintiff's experts to determine whether or not a certain class of individuals were, uh, uh, were injured. So the trial court uh, allowed for the class cert to go through. Um, and how this relates is that Zufa wanted uh, Judge Richard Bulware to take a look at this potential appeal that was coming down the pike at the same time he was determining whether or not to certify uh, the plaintiff's class. Now, one of the arguments that uh, you, could ar you could say worked for Zufa was the fact that uh, Judge Bulware stated that he would be denying the intellectual property uh, component of the class action lawsuit. So even though uh, the claim was that the name, image, and likeness or name, image, and, and likeness of uh, fighters were uh, violated by antitrust laws because uh, the allegation that the UFC suppressed the use of their rights uh, did not hold any weight with the court simply because of the fact that there were different uh, damages for each particular individual in the class. So that's, uh, although no written opinion has come out, uh, one could surmise that the judge would uh, come to that conclusion that, hey, uh, one person's image their damages are different than another person's image based on more factors than what you could do in a class action lawsuit. But on to the, the issue at hand related to the tuna, uh, tuna case. The Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals actually overturned the class cert. Um, and it's, it's, they overturned the case in favor of the tuna companies uh, uh, as 
Starcast and Bumblebee. And they found that uh, it was due to the fact that the, there was a lack of showing uh, that all of the plaintiffs in the proposed group were injured. Now, the, here comes the wrinkle. It had come out in August that the original trial court judge uh, had stock or their family had stock in one of the companies that the plaintiffs were suing. Why is that important? Well, you are, as a judge, supposed to identify potential conflicts of interest before you take on a case. And if you do have a conflict of interest, like having stock in a company that is coming before you, you need to recuse yourself from the particular case. Recuse meaning uh, let the parties know that you cannot be uh, an impartial uh, ju judge in the particular case. Now, obviously you could if you uh, be an impartial judge if you didn't care about what your stock holdings was, but there's an appearance of fairness, of obviously, that you couldn't just uh, rule in one, comp one side's favor and it comes out later that uh, <laughs> that you owned uh, owned uh, uh, owned stock in that particular company or favorable to that uh, other company for some one reason or other for a tie-in. So why didn't the judge uh, report this beforehand? Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a hard question to answer because it could have been that she didn't know uh, one of her family members had the stock. It could be that she maybe didn't know think that that was an issue or it just didn't uh it didn't register i mean it, it would be hard to think that it didn't register but uh it would have to be one of the other uh, other two issues whether she didn't think it was an issue or she just didn't know and i tend to believe that she may have not known that uh she owned stock in or her family owned stock in one of the companies that was being sued before her why and so so uh, the uh, attorneys now for the uh, tuna companies have come out and argued that this whole thing should be turned over because uh, the trial court had made the initial wrong claim that the plaintiffs were uh, certified by a class. What does this mean for Zufa? and the plaintiffs in the, their particular lawsuit. Well, it probably means that uh, they will need to wait until this particular case uh, uh, resolves itself yet again. Possibly, uh, Judge Richard Bulware could issue his ruling uh, certifying the class for the bowed class of individuals of plaintiffs uh, that he originally indicated uh, almost a year ago. It could be that the once they redo this trial, uh, the court will rule differently or could uh, or could rule similarly in granting class action certification. The, it's hard for me to believe that uh, we waited this long to get the resolution of this case to have it unwound and not seeing it wound back again. Meaning that we'd have to wait uh, for Zufa and I trust law fans. We'd have to wait for a class action certification to happen. Now that's just my speculation. How long that will take? Uh, could be years. Who knows? Uh, I would hope that this case would move along, but again, we have these obstacles and hurdles uh, related to th the other cases concerning uh, class action certification and the legal issue as to whether all individuals identified in the class must have uh, uh, must have a showing of injury, uh, not just uh, uh, possible. It's, it's, it's a hard one to, to, to figure out. Uh, we will continue to, to follow this. It's Jason Cruz with the legal submission. Have a good one.